A unatoč problemima, Bosna i Hercegovina će ući u NATO za dvije do pet godina. To su riječi profesora doktora Žaniv Hejna, stručnjaka za sigurnosne studije na Nobel institutu u Oslu. Hejn je bio istraživač na Harvardskom univerzitetu, na Međunarodnom institutu za strateške studije u Londonu i na Institutu za mir u Štokholmu. Radio je i kao profesor političkih nauka na Univerzitetu u Torontu o putu Bosne i Hercegovine ka NATO, evropskoj sigurnosti i stanju u Siriji. S njim je razgovarala kolegica Jasmina Đekić. the United States. Uh, it will allow Bosnia to be part of a forum where the most important security issue will be addressed and in some instances will be enforced. Um, now, there are specific reasons why Bosnia uh, is indeed interested in NATO and they are linked to the logic of the region and the legacy of the crisis in the former uh, Yugoslavia. Indeed, NATO will provide a framework that will guarantee that violence will not erupt anymore in that part of the region and it will help Bosnia to um, create better relationship with its neighbor through a transformation of its military. Uh, that indeed key part of the process of being a member. Now it's difficult because there's an economic crisis that affects everyone. Uh, but I do think the membership process is on track and that you know Bosnia will become a member in the next couple of years or the next five years um, at the least. Um, is the economic crisis in the EU having a, an effect on its uh, security goals? And what are the main security goals of the EU this year? Well, the EU members have all been affected by the uh, economic crisis and all the defense budget in Europe have been slashed um, again. Um, so the, the, the main problem for European countries is actually to invest enough to be able to set up a meaningful force that could be sent uh, abroad to manage crisis. Now, with the, the current um, austerity program, the obvious road forward for EU members is to actually pool their armed forces to share their capabilities. But it's a fundamental step forward that some uh, countries are not ready to take. And the question behind all this is, are we friends forever? We need 27 air forces in Europe. That's the kind of fundamental question that the, the, the members uh, are trying to resolve. But so far, there is not an obvious way to move forward in that direction. And the result is that from a strict capabilities point of view, the EU is nowhere near to be a meaningful actor in world security. Will we ever see a NATO intervention in Well, as far as NATO is concerned, there is no consensus among members to actually intervene, whatever the form of intervention would be uh, in Syria. There is also a disagreement regarding the position to have vis-à-vis -vis the opposition, the rebels group, uh, however large that group is actually defined. Uh, France and the UK seems to be on the verge of asking the end of the arms embargo. The rest of Europe is much more reluctant. Some Analysts will say it's a folly to do that because the only result of the end of the embargo will be an escalation in the conflict. In other words, if we allow the rebels to have more arms, the Syrian regime will itself uh, use 
more arms from the world market or from its ally uh, in Moscow. So the end of the embargo, you know, is far from solving the crisis. It's on the other end, some experts will say, well, uh, if we want to see the end of the Assad regime, somehow we need to help the rebels. Okay? It's a very acute dilemma. The same question happened in Bosnia 20 years ago. It's exactly the same uh, configuration. There are no obvious solutions for it. Um, what the international community should try to encourage, that's my modest opinion, is to set up the condition for a successful mediation. I.e., it seems to me that after two years uh, of an ongoing conflict, there is something like a stalemate. And the international community should inform the belligerent on all sides that indeed there is a stalemate, that there is no winning uh, easy winning possible and when you got a stalemate like that the situation should be ripe for a successful mediation that's where the focus should be at this stage when the uk and france reach a common position most of the time the rest of europe is following at least on security and defense issue now this time Apparently, the opposition of Germany, Sweden, and other countries is, is very obvious. Uh, but France has already said that if the rest of the EU does not follow, France will basically act unilaterally. Okay. So the question of, of, for Europeans is, you know, do we follow France or do we allow France to alone outside the EU framework. Libya was outside the EU framework. Mali was outside the EU framework. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at some point you ask yourself, is the EU actually relevant in all this? Thank you so much.